John chapter 16, verse 33. Let me know if you got there. I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we praise you. Father, it's been said many times, but um, I really struggle with Memorial Day. Um, it's, like our, it's like our country loses track, and we think of these people one day a year. Um, Father, you've shown me many times that the word hero is used way too loosely. Um, these men and women that have died, that's true heroes. And they've died for us to be able to stand here in this room today and worship you. So, Father, I thank you for putting them on this earth to do that. Um, today you've given me a sermon that has been very hard to prepare for. And... Uh, I just ask that you give me your words, Father, for this sermon today. That you give me the boldness to preach it. Um, but most of all, that it comes across with your love. So, Father, right now in this moment, I, I'm asking for you to anoint me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Father, I ask that you take all doubt. Pain, sadness, um, pride. Father, that you take that away from me and you replace it with you today, Father. Your breath, your love, your wisdom. Most of all, your boldness to give this message. Father, we ask these things in your name. Help us to love, laugh, and forgive. Amen. Okay. Just like that video... And what we've already talked about today, guys, but many brave men and women have fought and died for our country. Uh, these were good people. These were good people. These were brave people. These were people, again, that died just so we could be sitting here right now. These people were husbands. They were fathers, wives and mothers, children, aunts, uncles. On September 11, 2001, 3,000 innocent people died on the worst of terrorist attack, excuse me, the worst terrorist attack in our nation's history. These again were innocent people. These again were husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, children, grandparents, brothers and sisters. This past Tuesday at 11.32 a.m., an 18-year-old young man named Salvador Ramos walked into Robb Elementary School and murdered 19 children and two adults. From all of these terrible tragedies and deaths, so many people look to God for their pain and sorrow, and they ask him this one question, why? Why? Today's sermon title, Why Do Good Things, or excuse me, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? How many of y'all have asked that question before? Show of hands. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I think about the people that, whose families did go fight for our country, and you know, Father, why would you allow those people, these good people, these brave people. Father, why would you allow them to die? Especially a lot of our young men and women that have fought for our country, they, they were young. You know, I had a, a really good friend when I was in high school um, who passed away in a, in a tragedy. He, he had drowned. And uh, I remember dropping to my knees and screaming, why? Why would you take this fine young man with a bright future that's 18 years old and take him from this earth, why would you do that?
this question has been a it's been asked a lot this week I'm sure many people are trying to figure out whose fault it is for shooting for the shooting at Robb Elementary School they want to pin the blame on someone some want to blame President Biden some want to blame Governor Abbott some want to blame the liberals some want to blame the conservatives some want to blame gun laws but as the church, we need to understand who is truly to blame here. There are three people. There are three people to blame for why bad things do happen to good people. Number one is the obvious. Number one is Satan. That's the obvious, right? Doesn't take a lot of explanation, but I'm going to explain it a little bit. As the church, we have to first know and understand that Satan is real. Blows my mind that some people do not think that he is still amongst us today. It's not hard to see him. Not only is he real, but he prowls around each and every day. 1 Peter 5.8 tells us this. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. What is Satan really after? If you look at this verse, I want you to think about this verse. What does a lion devour? It's prey, right? Okay, so he, he devours and attacks what kind of animal? Weak. Weak. Animals that are not on guard or paying attention to their surroundings. What this verse tells me, I don't want to be that kind of animal. This kind of animal is lazy, it's weak, it's slow, and to be brutally honest, it's stupid. Yes, I'm a pastor and I just said stupid right up here on the stage. Lazy because they won't give the effort to be alert. Weak because they will not grow their spiritual muscles. Slow because they got fat from being lazy and weak. And then stupid because they don't give the time and effort to study the attack plan of their attacker. Christian warriors, don't be this type of animal. Once Satan hunts you down and catches you, then what does he want to do? Let's go look at John 10.10. 10. This is Jesus. The thief comes only, only to steal, kill, and destroy. He will either kill, steal, or destroy you, or he will work through you to do that. Satan, I need you all to understand this. Satan will work through you just like God will work through you. He'll do it but it takes you to allow it. Satan's been doing this since the beginning of time, which brings me to the second person to blame for why bad things happen to good people. Us. From the moment that Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, sin was allowed into our world. Um, you know, and it's, I struggle with that, man, because Adam had it made, right? Like, you know, he's sitting in this beautiful place, you know, and, and, and it, you know, he's naming animals. Like, that's his only job. Like, it's easy, right? But he wanted more. Like, I don't understand. He had one job, and that was to name animals, and then he had one rule, which was to leave the fruit alone. The man had it made. There was no other sin. As humans, we wanted free will, and guess what? God granted us our wish. The problem is our free will allows us to make some really stupid decisions. Two weeks ago, uh, I was leaving the jewelry store. It was Friday evening at 5 o'clock. I'm driving down the road, and... Uh, some of y'all are already laughing. That's messed up. Just don't ruin the story. Just hush. 
So I'm driving down the road, and, and if y'all know where the jewelry store is at on Richmond Road, first of all, who's been on Richmond Road at 5 o'clock in the afternoon? Raise your hands. Listen, it takes all I can to, to keep my Christian self, you know, in charge, okay? So, so I'm driving, and I get to the red light by Domino's Pizza, okay? Now, it's me, and there's two other cars in front of me, and I don't know, a hundred behind me, right? And the light turns green, and, and, and I was taking Caroline, my youngest, out on a date that night. And my wallet was sitting in my seat. And I had pulled out my debit card at the store before I left, and I had to see was my debit card in my wallet. So I grabbed my wallet, and in that split second, I hear brakes. And I look up, and all I see is the bumper of the car in front of me, and, and, and I hit her. Yeah, brand new car, by the way. I just found this out. Brand new car. Yeah, brand new car. And you know what I don't like about new cars? Let me tell you what I don't like about new cars. <laughs> You know, I drive a, a 2001 Grandma Pearl Lexus, okay? So, so I can hit a car, and it's all good. It's not a big deal, right? Like, a few scratches, it brings out character, okay? <laughs> but, but this lady, okay, who was very sweet, by the way. She was so nice. But first thing I did, I said, I'm a pastor, like right off the bat. Like I was letting her know. <laughs> it's very seldom I play the pastor card, but I played it that day, okay? <laughs> Need y'all know that. There's times that God tells me it's okay to use that card. And as soon as I hit her, he said, play the pastor card, play the pastor card, play the pastor card, <laughs> immediately. So anyway, so, so, <laughs> so, 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 so the, the problem with the new cars is, is, is they're all, they're, there's all these computers on them. They're all fancy and stuff, right? Okay. I literally hit her bumper at five miles an hour. Okay. It Barely, it dented my hood up just a little bit. You know, my boy Tim's fixing that. Thank you, Tim. You're my man. That's what I'm talking about. Tim's fixing that. It only cost me $150, my man. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but but, but I, I barely hit her bumper, y'all. And I mean, I couldn't find a scratch on it. And I was like, you know what? Don't send it to the insurance. Just give me the bill. I'll pay for this. I don't turn this into insurance. Y'all know them stupid little sensor things on the bumper? Yeah. You know how much one of those cost? One. One, one sensor on that bumper, $500. I busted four of them. Yeah, so anyway, Annabelle's not getting a car this year because <laughs> can't have the insurance go up. But guys, here's what I'm getting at, okay? It was my dumb free will decision that made me lean over to grab my wallet that caused the wreck. If I keep my eyes on the road, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you may not make those stupid decisions. Amen, right? Good gosh. This past morning, uh, excuse me, this past Tuesday morning, um, Salvador Ramos, with his free will, made a terrible decision. And it took a lot of innocent lives. Now, I'm going to bring up the third person to blame, but before I do, I need to explain something to y'all. When I put this up here, don't freak out. Let me explain, okay? Go ahead, Nick. Now, wait a minute, Micah. That's sacrilegious. Just give me a second. God is good. So how can he allow bad things to happen? That's a question, but I, that's a great question. But, but I want to ask you guys a couple questions. What is good, and who determines what is good? What we may think is bad may not be bad. Now, hang on. Let me finish. Let's go to Mark chapter 10, verse 18. No one is good except God alone. So God is good. We can agree with that? Yes. What is good is good. God is good. That's it. Right there. Bam. Right? Anything good comes from God. Right. Amen? Right. We agree with that. Yes. We have Jesus saying that. That is scripture in front of you. We cannot argue with that. Right? right. Christian head nods. I love it when y'all do that. Go to Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
So let me ask y'all a question. If we all fall short of the glory of God and God is good, how many of us, of us are perfectly good? Okay. This is very elementary, but I want to make sure y'all are catching this. Okay. According to Romans 3.23, all people, even the so-called good ones, the, you know, those, those really good Christians, y'all, y'all are here today. It's Memorial Day weekend. Y'all are the good Christians. Good job. But even y'all, even y'all, even y'all, sin and fall short of God's standard. Right? Okay. Now let's go back and answer those questions. What is good? God. Okay. And who determines good? God and God alone because we do not understand the full goodness of God. Do y'all follow that? Because if you don't, you ain't going to get nothing else from this sermon. We do not understand God's full goodness because we can't reach it. We don't understand it. We fall short of it. Amen? Success. We may not understand what God does consider good. So, I'm, 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 okay, I'll put it to you this way. Okay, there was a bird, okay? There's this bird. And this bird was flying south for the winter, okay? This bird was up in, like, Montana, okay? You know, it's beautiful up there, but it gets cold. So, so the bird is coming down from Montana to go south for the winter. As soon as he takes off, he breaks his wing. And he falls into this huge pasture. While he's in this huge pasture, he's sitting there laid down. He's flopping his wing around. He's mad, you know. What am I going to do? I can't do nothing. All of a sudden, this big old cow shows up. This big old cow, without saying a word, walks right over this bird, stands over him, and drops manure all over him. <laughs> so the bird then, now this, this bird doesn't have a bad day, okay. <laughs> then broke his wing. He's getting cold. And now he's got, you know what, all over him. Now, this bird was mad, and this bird was throwing a fit. And then all of a sudden, this bird realized, I'm not cold anymore. It was warm manure. <laughs> Saved the bird's life. The bird didn't freeze to death. The moral of the story is, what you may think is bad could save your life. Could be good. But I still don't want some cow dropping manure on me. Amen? How many of y'all know the name Joel Bonner? Anybody in this room know that name? I thought we had good Christians in this room. That is a shame. This man is an evangelist who uh, years ago in Iraq, at the age of 24, got his legs blown off by, uh, by a bomb. Um, Joel, through that process, um, at first was, was pretty upset. He was mad at God, and this went on for a good year. He didn't want anything to do with God. And finally, God spoke to him. He said, son, I don't think you understand. I don't need your two legs to use you. That man, to this day, has helped thousands of people reach God's love and reach salvation. Now here's what I need you to get. He himself has never had a problem denying this. If his legs don't get blown off, he doesn't do that. Again, what we may think is bad, God makes good. Those of y'all that are a part of this ministry can remember years ago, we had a young lady, a 13 year old girl, I'm not gonna say her name because I didn't get permission. But this young girl, uh, was, uh, she got cancer. Um, our ministry was very close to her and her family. Uh, we spent countless hours praying for this young girl. <clears throat> she passed away at age 13. This was pretty early on in, in my walk as a leader in ministry. And a couple of y'all are sitting in this room right now, but you, you came to me. 
And you said, Mike, this doesn't make sense. We prayed healing. We did exactly what the Bible told us to do. We, she shouldn't have died. God showed me this young girl fighting cancer touched thousands of lives in this community. Thousands of lives. Again, what we may think is so bad, and it looks awful, and it hurts, God can make it good. This brings up another question. Why would God allow good people to die, period? And he actually gives us the answer in the Bible, guys. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1 through 2. If you have your Bible, you're going to want to mark this. Good people pass away. The godly often die before their time. But no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. For those who follow godly paths will rest in peace when they die. As much as we may be so upset about someone passing away at a young age, like I was about this young girl at 13, God was showing me God is protecting them from the evil to come. We have no idea what the future holds. No clue. Who's to say, and I need you all to understand, I'm not speaking ill of this girl whatsoever because I think she would have done amazing things regardless. But, but here's the thing, we don't know that. And God does. Who's to say if she doesn't go through that and, and he decides that she is not done on this earth, let me rephrase that, because if he, he wouldn't say that, he, his timing was, all that was perfect. Okay, let's just say somehow in some way we could trump God and allow that young girl to live. Evil was coming. Do y'all understand that? Do you understand that when God takes you away from this earth, when your time is up on this earth, he's taking you at the proper time because evil is to come that he is protecting you from. Do y'all feel me here? Am I making any sense whatsoever with this verse? It's hard to swallow though, right? Like that's hard to swallow. We don't know what the future holds. God does. And we have to trust in that. And I know it's hard. I mean, you got, you got these elementary kids that did nothing wrong a few days ago. They were excited. It was the last week of school. They've done nothing to anybody. And he takes them at that early age. I'm not going to sit here and lie to anybody up here right now. That hurts and it makes me mad. And I don't like it. Do I question God? Yes, I do. I don't mind saying that. I sure do. I went straight to him. As soon as that happened on Tuesday, God, why in the world would you allow this? And he always tells me the same thing. Trust my will. Trust my plan. I got this. It's hard for us to imagine that. But guys, our life on this earth is literally that long. Eternity is forever. If eternity was the length of this room from wall to wall, our life is the end of that pen. Y'all understand this? His will is so much stronger. His plan is so much stronger. What's hard is, is trusting that. Because all we know is the earthly pain and the earthly suffering and the earthly deaths. That's all we know. For those of you thinking right now, Micah, you're wrong. It would never be God's plan for a great, joyful, peaceful,
peaceful, loving young person to die. Micah, there is no way. That is inaccurate. That is incorrect. Okay, well, I could not disagree with you more. And I have one word to prove my point. Jesus. What was God's plan for Jesus? Die on the cross. You feel me? It don't look good, but it's the greatest thing that's ever happened on this earth. When that man was hanging on the cross, nailed to a cross, beat to a pulp, it didn't look good. But if he doesn't do it, none of us are sitting here right now. God never said we would go through trials, or, or excuse me, God never said we would not go through trials and tribulations as well. In fact, Jesus said this in uh, John chapter 16. It's what we read at the very beginning. Pull that back up for me, Nick. I told you uh, all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. So in other words, okay, I need y'all to understand, if God never planned for us to go trials, through trials and sorrows and pain and suffering and so forth, why would Jesus say it? He said it right here. On earth, you will. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say you might. He said you will have many trials and sorrows. But read the last sentence. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Again, guys, this is the world. This is how long we're on it. Do you understand? He's taking control of that by dying on the cross for us. That whole plan, that's what, this, that's what all happens here. He has taken over the world. So we don't have to stay here when we do pass away. I want you to think about this when you ask the question, why do bad things happen to good people? As, as a Christian trying to grow in your walk, or in my personal walk, um, I always ask God for help. Who in here asks God for help? Okay. Who in here, show of hands, I want, I want to show of hands all this. I'm going to ask y'all to cooperate here, okay? Who in here ever asked God for strength? Show of hands, okay? And God gives you trials to make you stronger. How many of you ask for wisdom? Mm -hmm. And God gives you problems to solve. How many of you ask for courage? And he gives you battles to overcome. How many of you, how many of you have asked for love? And he gives you to people, he gives you people, your family, your friends, your loved ones to walk life with you. If one has faith in God, all things have meaning. All things. Even the things that we think are not good. Guys, trust in God's plan. Trust in his will. And I promise you that his love will follow. Every time. Again, it may not look like it. And it may be hard. And it may hurt. But I promise you, with all things, God's love will shine through if you trust in him. Believe in his plan. I'm going to close with this. If, if you guys, um, to be honest, if some of you um, are not being, if, you, if you're not going through trials and tribulations, I'll be honest with you, you, you're probably not stepping up. The more that you know God, the more that you grow your relationship with God, the more that you will be attacked. But here's the cool part. The more you know him, the more you grow in the relationship, the stronger you get, the braver you get, the smarter you get. So you know how to fight Satan. You know how to fight the temptations. You know how to fight the attacks. But make no mistake about it. We had seven people get baptized last week. Y'all give them a round of applause again.
I told all seven of those people, in fact, I think I said it right there, and, and I talked to them individually and so forth, but now you're taking that step. You're going to the next level. You're becoming that, you know, that next level Christian kind of thing, right? You taking that step, you're fixing to get attacked. It's going to happen. Satan will always attack you at your weak moments. That's when he's coming after you. You may be a strong Christian, but we all have weak moments, right? That's when he shows up. And when he does, he tries to come at you and penetrate you with everything that he possibly can. We have to be on guard. We have to stand strong. We have to be alert.